What is up everyone and welcome back to the Ratchet Motors YouTube channel. So we don't have a big intro for today. We're getting right back into our 1996 Triumph Thunderbird and we're going to finish off that bobber build. So if you're not familiar with our Thunderbird here, I'll put a link to the playlist up here above or over here. I always forget which side it is. Uh, but really, we've done all the hard work as far as mechanical stuff here. Now we're just going through some aesthetics to really finish off this bobber build. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so we're going to get right back into finishing up things here, which means the first step will be finishing off the seat pan. Uh, so we showed this in our last video. I can put the link up above. Uh, but <clears throat> got this all started, just kind of roughed in here. I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the uh, my nut cert, which is basically... a uh, a threaded insert that we can use in our sheet metal here and then i'll bolt this all in place and just do all the fine tuning and clean it up before we get it painted uh, making some clearance for the springs and then once we have the seat pan done i probably won't paint it right away but once we have it all kind of cut to fit and everything else and bolted in place uh, i'll go about doing my lighting on the back and then all the other things we have before we can uh, kind of give it a first run out on the road All right, so now we get that seat pan fully secured down here. The next thing I wanna do, you see the seat sits just a little flat, it ends up pushing you forward. So I'm gonna give it just a little more height on the bracket. We see the bracket here just goes to that pivot and I'm just gonna extend that a little bit, maybe about an inch or two, just to get the seat a little more tilt backwards. Uh, so that's a little more comfortable to sit on and then we can figure out exactly how the seat pan needs to be clearanced. All right, so here are my two tabs I cut. I'm basically going to use these and I'll weld them to my original bracket here just to extend that location of the hole. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, which I learned as a little trick a long time ago, is I'm going to take the two tabs and I'm actually going to tack them together. And then when I shape them and drill the holes, I'll know they'll be exactly the same on both sides here. So I'm going to quickly just tack these both together and then I'll just start shaping them and I'll put the locating hole in to match with our new pin location. And then pretty quickly we'll be able to extend this a few inches and just make our seat a little bit taller off the frame to give it that right nice little rake. Uh, should be a little bit comfier. Before we get everything welded up here, just an idea of what we're going to do. Again, just extending that tab to get the seat up a little bit higher, uh, which should be comfier for that seated position here. Uh, so we'll get it tacked all together here and then kind of get it in its final install, finish up our seat pan, and then we'll go into our lights. It's just tacked for now, but you can see much better seated position. It does look a little odd all stand stood off like that, but honestly, I don't really care. So it's gonna be comfier. It's gonna just kind of ride better overall. So we'll get that final welded up there and then we'll get that on that list of things that need to be painted with everything else. I'm pretty happy with that though. It's actually super comfy this way, regardless of how it looks. All right, so we're pretty happy with that seat pan. We get the seat on here all nice and comfy. 
The next thing we're gonna look at here is going to be our lights. So originally I was going to mount the lights to the rear fender, but I changed my mind on that because I'm actually not 100% sure if I even want the rear fender right now. So I figured we'll find another way to mount the lights and then the rear fender can always be optional. So you see here on the ground, we have our two blinkers as well as our one brake light and our license plate mount. I got all of these off of Amazon, so I'll make sure to put the link in the description here. So what we're going to do is figure out a way to mount the brake light with our license plate. And then we'll also figure out a quick way to mount up those two blinkers and wiring them in should be pretty simple. And I'm not sure if I showed this in the last video, but you can see we have our two front blinkers in that kind of bullet uh, graded style to match here. So first step is gonna be mounting everything and then wiring them up should be pretty easy. All right, so what we have here is a little bracket I made up here just out of our bar stock and cut that down. And I'm gonna weld that onto the back of my frame here and I'll use that to mount this brake light uh, with that little license plate frame. So the next thing I'm gonna do really is just clean up the, the really my, uh, my steel plate piece and then I'll drill my hole so that I can just thread uh, some screws right through my tail light bracket into this bracket. And then I'll go ahead and just tack that onto my main frame here. Should be pretty quick work. And just like that, we get our brake light mounted with our license plate bracket here. It's a little bent up from shipping, so we'll get it all straightened out, but everything's pretty centered. And I'm actually really happy with that that came out there. Plenty of clearance for the seat if it ever bounces up and down. <clears throat> so we'll get the, the blinkers on as well here, I think. I'm actually going to just double up right here with the muffler mounting hole. I think that's the exact size we're looking for, uh, which will make this very easy. We won't even have to make anything to mount these, and then it'll just be a little bit of wiring here. Uh, so we'll get to that next. All right, so we get the blinkers on here real quick. I'm not 100% sure if I like these or not. I just mounted them actually to that little, uh, I guess it's almost a gusset that we have in the bars there. I think what I could do is print a space here, maybe to change that angle, and that might make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna give it a shot because that's a nice, real simple place to, uh, to place that if I can get the angle just looking a little bit nicer there. Uh, and then from there, it's really just wiring up the lights and a few more things before we can actually consider this all wrapped up here. All right, so we're gonna get into a little bit of wiring from here. Uh, usually people's least favorite thing on some of these different projects, but luckily with this bike here, it's pretty straightforward. We only have about, uh, I wanna say seven wires total that we need to wire in on the back end. Uh, so we'll go through rewiring that. I got my Haynes manual here. So all the wiring is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just going to use some of our standard techniques, some of our crimp connectors. Uh, we actually have some connectors that are already here that we're just going to recycle and add in our new crimps. Uh, anywhere we can, we'll try to use some type of connectors so the lights can come off at any time if necessary. Uh, one thing I will comment on is <clears throat> I usually don't like to bash anyone, but one thing I did notice with this bike that I was extremely disappointed with is all of the lighting wiring. They had some aftermarket lights here as well. All of the wiring was only held together with electric tape. Uh, that is just, first of all, it's going to work pretty poorly in general. You're gonna have a lot of intermittent issues. And also that can be a little dangerous. You could actually potentially start a fire if anything arcs there. Uh, so please, please, please do not connect your wiring with just electric tape. Uh, you could use solder, you can use crimp connections.
right, so we got that wiring all wrapped up. We use my favorite uh, Tessa tape here just to wrap up any of that wiring that we didn't have a chance to put any heat shrink on. And you can see, I just tucked it up and heat, uh, sorry, zip tied it right up here underneath that panel. Just a little place to stash away for the time being until we have a more permanent location, but everything looks nice and neat. Uh, I was going to go on to putting on my new bars. Uh, I also grabbed a new clutch master and brake master cylinder, but before I do that, I think I'm actually going to start with this little dent here that we have. So this is on the tank uh, from the moment I bought it. I didn't see it when I uh, in the ad, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, what I'm going to try to use here is some of my paintless dent repair tools that I have. Uh, previously, I had a Crown Vic that got doored within like the first week that I bought it. So I got this paintless dent repair where you basically use hot glue uh, rather than tack welds. And we're gonna try to use our dent puller basically to hot glue uh, attachers to this and try to pull the dent out. I just wanna work on that now before I put on my new bars so I don't risk scratching anything up. Uh, it's nice to work on the tank while it's on the bike because it actually is secured in place now with the bolts. So we can, have a pr we can apply some pretty good pull on that while it's fixed here. So we'll give that a shot, uh, do our best to pull that dent out, and then we'll go on to putting on our new bars with our new levers and our new grips here. All right, so that uh, that pulling that dent is gonna take a little bit longer here. It's just a lot, uh, a lot of work, a lot of time, because we're constantly waiting for the glue to to harden, and then we pull it for a little bit, and the glue comes off. So we're slowly making progress there, but just for the sake of doing something a little bit more rewarding, we're gonna go ahead and put on our new bars because it's actually not going to interfere at all with pulling that dent. So you can see here we got some new black bars here that are also a uh, slightly lower height. And then I've also gotten a new clutch and brake master cylinder with our levers. My brake master cylinder was leaking and rather than waiting for a whole rebuild kit, I just went on Amazon again and I found a few, uh, a matching set of our clutch and our brake reservoir with the levers. So I'll put those on with our new bars and we have some new grips here as well. Just gonna update everything a little bit uh, and I'll put the links to all of these parts uh, in the description as well.
All right, I'm not sure if we caught this in the time lapse or not, but we got the levers on, we got our controls on, and we got the grips on here. Now, I didn't have any grip glue. I did a little research online, and the two biggest recommendations I saw as alternates for grip glue was to either use hairspray or spray paint. So my wife doesn't use hairspray, so we didn't have any of that around the house, but I did have some clear coat spray paint. So that's what we use to catch these on here. I let them cure overnight, and these are stuck on there real nice and good. But because we use paint, they still should be pretty easy to remove compared to glue. You can imagine when you sometimes paint something and it gets stuck together. It's not permanently glued there, but it is going to hold it in place for as long as you want. Uh, so we've got the grips on, we've got the levers and the controls on here. I'm going to do a little more work with that dent just off camera, continuing to work that with our paintless dent repair. And then from here, it's a lot of just buttoning up loose ends. We've got to paint up anything that we've ground down on the frame, as well as that seat pan that we've created. Uh, and then bleed the clutch and the brakes. So we're still working on this dent here. You can see we got our little piece uh, glued down, which you probably saw in our earlier clips. The dent is definitely getting smaller, but this is just a long process. We glue it on, pull it off. Eventually the glue doesn't hold enough, so we gotta glue it back on. So this is a little bit of give or take here, but you can kind of see what we're going through. See, I got that one glued down. And then we go with our slide hammer here. And this is a pretty bad crease in here, so we may never get it perfect, but we're going to keep working on it. And see with our fly hammer. Slowly working it back into shape. Right, so we get some pretty good progress here. What you'll see is we painted the frame along with anything that we mounted on there. We also painted our little, uh, I guess our seat pan piece. And you'll see the dent is actually coming along pretty well here. Still a little wavy, still a little ripply, uh, but much better than it was before. What I realized is I can actually put one of my tools in here. We have some of these, uh, these tools here to push a dent out from the inside. And if I actually go in the gas tank, I can push the dent out a little bit from the inside. It's a little tricky to get to, but we are making progress. Uh, so we got everything. The paint's still drying a little bit. What we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna paint any of the pieces from my seat bracket, and hopefully by the time that dries, uh, we can also start working on the dent a little bit more. And then after we have everything painted, it's really just putting it all back together, plumbing in our clutch and our brake fluid, and then wiring up those front headlights. So we're getting really, really close here. And now that this dent here has pretty much become the bane of my existence, I actually grabbed a second PDR kit just because there's one more attachment that I didn't have in my original kit. Uh, so you saw I was using my pull hammer, my slide hammer for a lot of this, but other PDR kits actually come with this really nice gripping tool. So rather than shocking that load with the glue, which is I think why a lot of the time why the glue is actually breaking loose, we can actually gradually apply force and start to pull that dent up. So we're gonna give that a shot here with this new setup. Really wanna get this dent out because it's just, it's really the only eyesore or the most significant eyesore on the entire bike. So if we can get rid of this dent, it's actually gonna end up looking really nice once the tank buffs out here. So we'll give it a shot. I'm gonna put it on a time lapse because I'm assuming this is going to take a little while. So everything's really coming together here. Oh, the last thing we gotta do is put on our mirrors. So I grabbed these bar end mirrors off of Amazon. Uh, so we're just gonna need to cut the grips and then I'll put these on there. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, still trying to get the dent out of the tank. That's probably the only thing that I'm not gonna be able to get done because it just doesn't seem to be pulling out there. So 
We'll figure out a solution, but in the meantime, we're still gonna work on pulling out the dent. Uh, because that glue takes so long to, to uh, solidify and heat up and everything, we're gonna do the mirrors at the same time here. All right, so I ended up cutting out there because I was actually getting very frustrated. Uh, we got that on, but what you can see, I have the other mirror here. So the way this works is we have like a collet like you see on a drill press. And as you tighten the Allen wrench, this internal nut here, sorry, I'm having a little hard time focusing. That internal nut is supposed to get pulled down and cause this all to expand. Now what's happening is this main cylinder here, the collet, is actually just spinning with the Allen wrench. So whoever designed this didn't really do their work. They put in a couple of these uh, lock washers in here, hoping that would keep things still. Doesn't work at all. So what I actually had to do with the other one is I had to use my channel locks and hold this still and tighten it down enough so that I could actually put it on the handlebars as somewhat of a press fit. And then once the handlebar was actually keeping this still, I was able to tighten it down until I could fully get that locked in there. Just keep that in mind if you buy these. These are some pretty cheap ones off of Amazon. I will put the link in the description. Uh, they seem to be just fine, but we do have to just pay attention uh, to that little setup there. Again, this little collet should be fixed and it's actually spinning with the nut or with everything, which isn't allowing the nut to actually go down uh, the cylinder there. So again, we just have to hold it with channel locks for a little bit to get that neural nut or whatever this is, kind of our spacer nut slid down the shaft. And then once it's a press fit, we should be able to put it right on the handlebars. It does look pretty sweet though, once we have it on there. And this is really the last aesthetic thing here we have for our Bobber Triumph. Uh, and from there, it's just adding some fluids and then we can take it out for a test ride. So that's everything we have for today's video. Let us know in the comments what you think about our build here. Again, we were just kind of working with what we already had on this Triumph. Some things were already chopped off and we were just trying to take that to the finish line, really finishing off this bobber build here. So what I did notice when I was putting everything back together is we are getting a little bit of a leak from the fork seal. So we do have one final project on this bike, which is getting those fork seals replaced. And then we'll be able to actually take it out on a drive. And sooner than later, we're going to get this thing sold so we can start working on our truck next. All right, so that's everything we have for today. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more content and share with your friends. And hope to see you again soon.